mountain wilderness where nobody ever comes. Only once in a great while, something like the sound of a far off voice, the low rays of the sun slip through the dark forest and gleam again on the shadowy moss. So the sentence that the topic for the, the speech I was supposed to give tonight is, and in the reflection, green mosses appear. In martial arts, it's very common to talk about reflections with mirrors. And most of the time, people have no concept of what instructors are talking about when they refer to mirrors. And as a matter of fact, there was a pretty famous martial art movie, The Circle of Iron, which is actually the uh, screenplay, to a certain extent, was written by Bruce Lee uh, before he died. They had David Carradine starred in it. And the whole movie was about this gentleman that had to compete against other people for the right to go try and make it from one place to another place. And at this other place, there was a special book that contained the wisdom of everything. And so every year, all these people would fight to have, so one person, the winner, could have the right to try to get to that place. And along the way, there was all these tests they had to go through. This one time, this man won, and he went on this quest. And he actually made it to where the book was. The whole movie is about the quest going to the book. It wasn't David Carradine that made it. It was actually um, a different person. David Carradine was kind of like the guy's teacher as he was going. And the book, he opened up the book, and it was it was the thick pages. There's probably 10 pages, that, but they were very thick. And each page was just a mirrored surface. So he opened it up, and he looked at it. And in his ignorance, he thought, this is ridiculous. I can't believe I came all this way. And he was very upset at first, but then he started to think about it and he started realizing what this mirror went. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. In a lot of martial arts, you have weapons that you use or <coughs> tools that you use in your martial art. The easiest place to see a mirror is in Kudo. And then we're going to talk about some other martial arts and then we'll talk about Taekwondo. But it's easier to envision it with Kudo first. In Kudo, we have two tools that we use, actually three tools. We have the, the bow, which is called the yumi. And we have the arrow, which is called a ya. These are the two tools that we hold, male and female. And then we have a tool, which is what we're shooting at, which is the target. The long range target is called a mato. The short range target is called a makiwara. When we shoot in Kudo, the makiwara, or the target, and our yumi, and our ya, are actually three mirrors for us. They reflect back at us our true essence. So when we shoot, we see very clearly, very polished mirror, we see very clearly into our own self. Because if we do something wrong, physically, but even more so, mentally, then it will blatantly tell us instantly that we're doing something wrong. For example, when, I, when you shoot Kuda, you have this very complex form that you're doing, all sorts of little body movements. But then when you shoot, in the moment you release this arrow, if your mind is pure and there's no thoughts on the moment of release, and the technique, the physical part is very good. And both of them have to be there. If you don't have both of them, then something happens. Something happens and it will reflect back at you. So everything you send out negative, your negative body movements, the negative mental movements come back at you in, from the reflection. So your arrow goes through the air and hits the target. Now if you're shooting long range, it's blatantly obvious at that instant, if the arrow hits the building you're shooting at, doesn't even make it inside the building or doesn't hit the target, it's pretty obvious that something is wrong. For example, I think, uh, Miss Dahl's first shot, she actually hit the building that she was shooting. And that's not an uncommon thing, and I'm not saying that to embarrass her. I've done it quite a few times. But when you first learn, there's all this stuff flowing around in your head. There's all these things flowing around in your body, and when you shoot, all that comes back to you. So, as a mirror, you have the mirror when you're shooting where your arrow goes. If it doesn't hit the target, it reflects back at you. So that's your teacher. It's teaching you that 
you did something wrong. What you did wrong, tell, it tells you by where the arrow went with respect to the target. So if it goes way over here, then you might have been standing wrong. If you stood facing this way, it might go to the left. If when you're shooting, your hand moves, your hand is holding the bow moves one direction, or it's going to change where the arrow is going. So the target reflects back to you. The Yumi would probably reflect more so than anything else. A Yumi, like a cello, I heard Ms. Elder mention that there's quite a few levels of Yumi, and just like on the cello, just like there is with the Yumi. Um, <coughs> good Yumis with a good string, which is called a servo, will actually make very pleasant sound when they're shot, if they're shot, shot correctly. If they're not shot correctly, they make this incredibly horrible sound. Um, if it's shot correctly, the Yumi actually rotates in your hand when you're shooting. It's all sorts of little things that happen with the Yumi when you shoot. If you don't do it right, if your mind's not pure, if your body's not pure, the arrow, the Yumi doesn't turn. The string doesn't make the good sound. And all sorts of other things can happen. It can tip when you're shooting. Your, your hand can open up when you're shooting. It can fly out of your hand and fly through the... Actually, I shot once. My Yumi made it closer to the target than my arrow did. <laughs> it went flying out of my hand and made it halfway down the Izuchi, the grass of the Izuchi. So this is a reflection for you. And then the arrow is obviously the reflection also. The arrow, when it cuts through the air, you can't hear it so much when you shoot, but if you're down at the other end and it's safe, there's a little area where you can sit when the arrows come in, you can tell how good someone's shooting is just by the sound the arrow makes when it's going through the air. It makes a very unique sound when it's shoot, shot correctly long distance. It doesn't make this horrible sound. It actually makes like a note. It sounds like someone's playing a note, just like on here. Like a whistle. Yeah. And actually they have special arrows that are whistling arrows to create that effect if you can't shoot well enough to make your arrows shoot like that. So, okay, we have mirrors, and we're going to talk about different types of mirrors, but right now for Qdo, we have these mirrors that our instruments that we're using are reflecting back to us, and they're telling us about our imperfections and our things that we're doing wrong. Not too long ago, um, Mr. Humble, actually a student of mine, gave me an uh, advertisement for the Yaido program that's being taught in Pittsburgh here. Now, in Taekwondo and in Korean martial arts, we use a sword. The Korean sword is, is nowhere near I hate to say as nice as this because it's not as refined. The Koreans didn't refine their swordsmanship anywhere near as much as the Japanese did. So I've done Korean sword forms and so on before, but um, I decided to start taking this Iaido because a lot of the Kudo instructors take Iaido, and I figured, well, there has to be something similar. And sure enough, when you do Iaido, it's amazing. You have your instructor walking around, but when you're doing when you're doing Iaido, when you're doing the form, and you you do all these different motions and. Whew, you're cutting out here like this because this is not your body. You don't have little muscles and you don't have tendons and ligaments connecting all this stuff together to you. It kind of goes where it wants to go. Sometimes when you try to get the blade to stop right out here, it ends up over here. So you look and you go, oh, I made a mistake. It's out here. Also, um, Mr. Humble was very fond of showing everyone this the other day about the sound all these blades were making. The blades make a completely different sound if they're done correctly. If you do it incorrectly, it makes a kind of a low sound because the blade might be turned a little bit as you're cutting. If you do it correctly, it makes a much higher pitch sound when you're cutting with it. So all these little things are reflections for how we're doing. We do the form and it doesn't sound like that. We're doing something wrong in an instant response back. Now in Taekwondo, other than once you're black belts and we have a couple of weapons forms, we really don't have anything as substantial as this to, to reflect back at us our technique. We have our punches and our kicks, and we can watch yourself in a real mirror and see what it looks like. But there's nothing slapping us in the face. This slaps us in the face when we do something wrong.